favorite form factor for this thing are the photo assignments. And this is where we give you guys a prompt. We ask you to go out and shoot some pictures and then you submit them back to us and we have one of our faculty members pick 20 pictures that they like or wanna have a discussion about and we present them. Today, this is our third installation of this. We did Windows with Bill Maher and Sarah Lean. We did Transitions with Lori Klein. And today we're doing My Holiday with Allison Wright. Now, if you know Allison's work, you know what an amazing photographer is. And if you don't know Allison's work, you should, because hands down, Allison is one of the best editorial photographers working today. And we're really lucky to have her as part of our faculty. But not only is Allison a great photographer, she's a photographer with a conscience. And a lot of her work is focused on trying to promote some sort of positive social change. And to that end, Allison is actually running a workshop with us starting, I think, March 8th on creating social change through photography. So I encourage you guys to check that out. And in talking to Allison last week, I found out she's actually going to be publishing a book here in a couple of months. Uh, I think the title is Grit and Grace, Empowerment of Women in the, uh, the Emerging World. So Allison is just a wonderful person and we're gonna have a great time um, having her review your pictures today. So before I bring Allison into the room, I just wanna go over a couple of logistics. The way this is gonna work is I'm gonna bring Allison in. She's gonna review the pictures. And then at the end, we're gonna have an opportunity for some questions and answers. And the way you participate in the questions and answers is at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q and A button. So please type your questions in during the, during the program. And at the end, we'll save about 15 minutes. And then Zach, who you just met, uh, doing intros there. And I will sort of work with Allison to get you guys engaged in the discussion. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys at this point. I want to bring our friend Allison into the room. I need my notes. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you, Allison. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Thank you for that lovely introduction. Well, I mean every word of it, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to having you back here in Santa Fe in person and working with our students here. But in the in the meantime, we'll we'll work digitally. Good, yeah. Thanks so much to Zach for all the work that you've been putting into this. And Reed, you're out there somewhere, but um, I'm really uh, very proud to be part of this family. So um, this is exciting. I mean how fun to look at holiday photos. I mean, this was, this was such a great theme. Um, I couldn't help but as I was looking through all of these images, wonder what it would be like to look at these last year or even next year, um, because I think probably most of us had pretty subdued um, holidays. Um, <clears throat> at least I hope you were and not having huge parties. But um, this has been, uh, yeah, it was a, definitely a challenge to pick 20 of them, but um, I'm excited to show you the 20 that I've chosen. And um, I think it's a great exercise to give yourself um, these like one word assignments, you know, that sometimes it's hard when you to kind of motivate yourself to get out with your camera. So I really encourage all of you if, I don't know what the next one is or when you do it again, but I think it's um, a really great way to just sort of motivate yourself or inspire yourself. I mean, sometimes I even do that with my writing, like, you know, just when you did jumping off point, you just pick one word and write about that. But um, I think it was windows before and now it's, um, this was the holidays. So, um, but it was really interesting to see holidays means such different things to different people. I mean, it's not just Christmas or even just Hanukkah, holiday. Some, I saw that a couple of people took it as holiday, like vacation, um, also valid, different take. Um, and there was also a lot of light images. Um, and why not? Photography is about light. So uh, I am here from my office in New York City, uh, where we are enjoying beautiful two and a half feet of snow. Um, 
probably the biggest snowstorm we've had in a very long time. It doesn't take long for it to turn into a, an icky mush, but, um, but it's been really nice just to even get out and, and photograph in that. Um, so I'm ready to jump in. Um, oh, I, I do wanna say one more thing before we get going, Allison. So when, mm -hmm. when I, we asked Allison to do this, um, we're gonna treat this kind of like a, a critique, but, but, a, but a very gentle critique. So I've asked Allison to you know, talk about the pictures and because the way we teach at Santa Fe, we, we talk about the pictures, we find out where you are on your creative journey, and then we give you um, some suggestions on, on maybe a, 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 another place you could go to, to you know, up, up, your, up your game a little bit. So that's, that's what I asked Allison to do when we're, we're doing this. So she says, no, nothing will be derogatory, but it'll be encouraging to, to move in, in, in new and different creative directions possibly. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out, Stafford. So I, you know, when you do a workshop with me, as Stafford said, it's always something positive, but, you know, I think we're all here to learn. And I think that, you know, the ones I picked are just sort of ones to discuss and, and talk about, you know, we're just here to talk about photography. You know, this isn't a contest, we're not judging. Um, but there were a number of these light, light images, and I thought, um, from all different people. So I thought, well, this is really interesting, but why not, you know, there's Christmas lights. And so I picked this one, I guess I just, my initial response to it was that it reminded me of a couple of things that I used to play with as a kid, um, spin art, where you just had this rotating piece of paper and you would put paint in it and it would spin and also spire graph where you would take this circle and spin it around. So I sort of had that initial response and uh, you know, with the lights, I like the colors and I, it also made me pause and think, how was this made? And, you know, cause I kept thinking like focusing on the top of it, but what I liked was then going back and seeing the layer of the tree, the trees actually in the back and, um, so I just thought this was interesting. And to those of you that are playing around with the lights, um, you know, my, my biggest suggestion, and that this doesn't refer to this one is, but to use a tripod because it looks like this person did, and that's gonna give you more, um, something to focus your eye on, um, even if it is a uh, sort of abstract image. Yeah, Karen, you remember the, the, those, those light bright things we had as kids? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah that too. And, spin it and it kind of harkens back to that feeling. And I don't know, it feels, mm -hmm. feels Christmassy and, and, and festive. I, I like this picture quite a bit. Yeah, I went out to this place called Diker Heights at Christmas where they do the overload of houses all covered in lights. And, you know, so I think there's definitely that association for Christmas, you know, to just go all out with the lights. Um, so that's, yeah. Hmm. So this is an homage to Edward Hopper. I, I liked this because you, again, my eye came back to it. And I think they handled the photographing in at nighttime well, because you really do want some of that blue light. You don't want to photograph night where it's just pitch black. And then all you're seeing are these two yellow windows, you know, to see an outline of the house and the trees. Um, you really want to see something else when you're photographing, um, you know, at least the shape and the outline. And I just thought there was some humor to it because usually we would think of Santa being outside coming in the house, but here's Santa like totally nestled in the house. And it's kind of like you, the viewer, ha ha, are outside. Um, in the cold while well, he's all kind of warm and uh, nestled in there. Um, so that's Christine's. Um, yeah, I thought that was just, it was a fun one that really sort of captured the essence. I think it's of interesting because too, it looks like, I don't, I don't know if those are, on my screen, it looks like um, like plastic sheeting in the windows. So I, I feel oh. like there's something else going on in, in there, which kind of draws me in, but it also, I'm taken back to uh, a Christmas story, and I'm I'm thinking of the leg that's in the window uh, at, at the holiday. He gets that that leg. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I see that as sort of lacy curtains. So, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, to me, it kind of has a warm glow to mm -hmm. it. But now that you 
if you say it's plastic, hmm, that is know. a different it's, feel. Just doesn't it might be. Hmm. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's a, it's a good evening shot. This I loved. Um, <clears throat> so, Judy, if this is a self-portrait, I really hope you're not going to be offended by this because if that was like an homage to Edward Hopper, this is sort of a homage to, um, um, uh, what's the, uh, I'm losing the name, the guy with the mask. Um, oh, the Silence of the Lambs. That's what it made me think of uh, when I first saw this. And I think it's just the severity of the mask. And it just, it's so humorous that, uh, you know, just, it's so hard to read people's expressions with these masks. And that's what I think is so sort of timely about it. But they're sort of like, it's what I love. It's like, it's not humorous. It's just like very straight on. You don't see real crinkle up the eyes like someone's laughing. It's just like, yeah, here I am. And again, I hope you're not gonna be offended by this, but I thought of this poem, this little Wadsworth poem, um, that there was a little girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. And when she was good, she was very good indeed. But when she was bad, she was horrid. And it's a poem that my mother used to always say to me, and I had very curly hair at the time. So, um, you know, of course I did take it personally and I'm sure there was a reason she kept drilling that into my head, but I think it's funny, you know, it's very timely. I think the background works because it's somewhat interesting. There's just something naughty about it. Um, the red pajamas and, you know, here I am. Um, despite wearing a mask, I'm still gonna have my cocktail. Um, yeah. So I thought that was, I like that portrait. Nice catch lights in the eyes too, by the way. Um, I think that's always key when you're making um, <clears throat> a portrait of someone. It's very nice to have a, uh, a little light in the eyes there, but it's a fun one. I love this one. Kembo, I love that one too. I mean, this really evokes a Christmas feeling. Um, <clears throat> you know, to see this little bouncy joy as she runs towards the tree and, you know, sadly, she might be a little disappointed because there's no gifts under there, but, um, but it is a wonderful use of light and that long slanting light just evokes that feeling of winter, that low winter light. Um, so the shadows are really wonderful. Uh, it's just, and just the way her foot is just lifted and that's creating its own elongated shadow. Um, so it, graphically, it's wonderful. Your eye leads, you know, from those lines, it just leads you right back to the tree, but she just looks like she's, she looks like she's actually elevated off the floor and just bouncing with so much joy. That evokes Christmas. So now we have two Christmas trees in a row here. And I thought this was really fun because it kind of, to me, kind of gave a sense of place. Like I just felt, I don't know, I don't know. It kind of did feel like the Midwest to me. I sort of couldn't tell if this was a tree or a teepee. So I just decided it was a teepee tree. And I like the, you know, kind of had the Christmas lights, um, but yeah, it's also very teepee-ish. And so I think that the big netting around it really added to it. I think you have to be really um, careful and aware when you're using framing like that or any kind of manipulations that you're doing it to really enhance and evoke the mood rather than just because you can. Um, but I feel like it really worked in this context because I really like the softness all the way around it. Um, and it just feels cozy. And I just like the mystery of, you know, what is that? Um, oh, and you know what I loved? I love the ribbing of the snow on the trees in the back. I'm not quite sure how that's happening, but it really caught my eye. Um, if you, like the way that it's just ribbed snow. Um, so I just thought that was very interesting. It might be hard to see on some people's screens, but um, yeah, it's very pretty. Yeah, I'd be curious to know from Jolene if, if, if she actually came across this or, or did this as an installation, because I, I, I do find it quite compelling. Yeah, it just evokes warmth in the middle mm -hmm. of cold. And 
but it, it works well. It's, and I'm not, I'm curious how it's shot too, because it's a square, but um, yeah, it's lovely. So then we have a, a kind of similar theme, but different. And again, this feeling of isolation and I, again, with the dark, I love that there's shadowing in the back. You see the trees, but it's not so black, you know, you're still seeing something. And it just felt a little like hopeful, that tree, a little hopeful, a little defiant, and, and honestly, a little Charlie Brownish, you know, just kind of like out there in the middle of nowhere. But what really makes this is this S curve that's leading with the footprints that leads your eye to that tree. Um, and for those of you that don't know what an S curve is, it's this, thank you for pointing that out, but it creates your eye, um, it's an S that your, leads your eye from the point to where you wanna go in the photo. And this is just such a great job of it because it just feels, again, evocative with the footprints that it almost looks like it's one person walking out there, but they're obviously too wide. So it just kind of, you know, makes you have this feeling of humanity. Somebody was there, it's not completely on its own. So, um, I like the fact that there's those couple other trees in the foreground because it, it feels like that tree mm -hmm. is like holding court. You know, the, yeah, the, the other ones are coming to, and it's so pretty. I yeah, mean, it's, it's so well lit and decorated. Um, yeah, it's a tree that got of a lot of attention, as and the others are feeling a little, you know, a little left out, a little following, you know, but they'll grow up, they'll get there someday. It's a pretty one. Um, this I liked, you know, it was just, for me, what I was drawn to was the graphic and sort of, it was, this photo was just a nice place to rest your eyes. You know, it just gave me this feeling of being right in the middle of the forest. Um, I could feel the stillness and the quiet around me. I, uh, and I guess I'm just really, you know, heightened awareness of that, you know, having just been out photographing Central Park with absolutely no people in it when the storm was. And, and it's, I like the trees are darker in the front and they sort of fade to the back. And so that feels very poetic. Um, I love, I love, I was just actually saying this today. I love when the snow actually sticks to the trees and you get that dusting on it. So you see something textural to them. Um, and I love the, um, yeah, I just love the, the palette of it. And, and you can almost just feel the silence. So it's just a, it's a very quiet photo. Yeah, it's a very gentle, quiet, peaceful mm -hmm. piece. Mm. Good job, Kathleen. So now we have more snow. So we're having fun with snow. Um, what I loved about this one, Donna, is that there's the, it's such a graphic, you know, like that line is so interesting. It's not a harsh line, it's a fuzzy line. And then you have this interesting texture of the light snow that's on the ground. I really like how you frame this. It's just a really strong graphic. Um, it's the shoe prints that keep bringing my eye back to it because they're not just regular shoes. It's like, what is going on in those shoes? You know, are they like some track or hiking boots or um, is that some sort of like crampon type thing on them? But it just makes it interesting enough that, you know, you're looking at it again. And I think that's really important, you know, to have your eye you know, color, light, composition, graphic, you know, what makes a good photo. And, and, you know, this just, I don't know, leads your eyes in the right places. You know, it's not, um, you don't want to cut any of them off. I like that there's just three prints. It's just clean. Um, but the, the layering, you know, the three um, layers to it, it's just really, really works. Anything to add to that stuff? No, I, I, I do like the, um, <clears throat> I like the contrast between what I, what I see is like a, you know, a, you know a, a tire track or a scrape to the pavement mm -hmm. and then a different form of transportation along the bottom. So I, I like it when there's, you know, like two stories going on within, within a frame. Mm 
Yeah, exactly. Good job, Donna. So then we can go to, so Kate, uh, more snow prints, great minds think alike. Um, I like that there's no point of reference here. Like it's very playful. I mean, if you really let your imagination go, I sort of imagine like this prehistoric pterodactyl type animal walking, you know, and caught in the, you know, like the La Brea tar pit situation. I'm <laughs> sure it's just a pigeon, you know, but it's just had that feeling to me that, cause it's so precise and they just look so, I don't know that, you know, anything three pronged like that. Yeah, I just start, my mind just starts to go into something prehistoric. Um, I like the evocative nature of it. Um, so. I think it's cool. Again, it, there's, there's a story on either side of the frame, right? It's like, where, where is this thing coming from? Where is it going to? And right. I picture it like walking into a Gary Larson cartoon actually, but um, <laughs> because no, because I don't know. It's just, I, yeah, it does have that feeling of sort of prehistoric playfulness. And the texture of the snow is lovely. I mm -hmm. mean, and just the black of the prints. I mean, the contrast is really nice. It's, um, you know, I don't know if this was shot in black and white, I think, um, you know, whenever you use black and white, you really do want to think about what you're using it for, not just turn it to black and white because you can, but, you know, I love these graphics that are, that are like this and that, you know, might even be its true colors, but it's just, yeah, it's a fun photo. I respect and enjoy it when people kind of break the quote unquote rules of photography with composition. Mm -hmm. um, because I think, I think this works well because you're just like cutting the frame base almost basically in half. And I don't know, it just, it just kind of works. Mm -hmm. Be interesting to see what it would look like if it went totally diagonally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, you could play around with it, but just fun. Um, okay. We covered that one. So I chose these next couple because I really didn't know the process of it. I thought this was interesting. Um, I'd like to know, Suzanne. It's, you know, these are, it's very evocative, this. Like, the, it feels to me like we're underwater and there's two manatees playing. You know, that's what came to my mind. But I mean, it's very Rorschach testy. So, I mean, it could be anything. Stafford probably sees something completely different. Yeah. But it just feels because of the color of the blue underwater. And I don't know what that process is. It's um, like speckled. Uh, I don't know, Zach. You're in the background. You're the you're the king of alternative processes. You know, you know what's going on here. I don't think that's an alternative process, but I will say that my brain went immediately to cyanotype. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of what it, I was thinking. It would look beautiful printed as a cyanotype, but I don't think it's done that way. It is really grainy. I, I'm actually really curious to know how. So Suzanne, if you're on, yeah, you have write, to let us know. In the comments, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna come back to you. And I'm also curious: is it supposed to be something, or is it just sort of, you know, Stafford? What do you see in it? I, I see you know. manatees. Oh, you do? Okay, I, good. I, I, I'm not I totally see, crazy. Yeah, I see two manatees. Oh, you know, good. Yeah. Hanging out and being mm -hmm. friendly. Okay, good. I thought, you know. I might have been way off base, but and it's really interesting because it's almost translucent. It's like you can see, it's almost like an X-ray because then you're like, oh, is this going into his body? You know that you can see the, I don't know, whatever those interiors my, are. My best guess is maybe frost on a window, but mm. I don't know. We're, we're taking bets. Hopefully, Suzanne will chime in. Okay. Well, maybe someone in the audience can give a guess. Well, we could look at this one because this is also, I believe this maybe the same process, but um, they look bluer on my screen. But what I liked about this again, I don't, I don't know the process, but the pairing was interesting. To me, it looked like a seed and a plant. So it sort of resembled growth, you know? So the two together, um, Again, if you're going to use a process, then you need it to be a reason and working for you. And in this case, I do think it works because A, it's a little, 
esoteric, but also um, it does feel like a birthing. And so it's, it almost feels like a whole bunch of seeds are making up this seed and a whole bunch of seeds are making up that plant, if that's even what it is. Um, again, I think it's open for interpretation, which makes it fun. And I think it's great when you can create a photo that someone keeps coming back to or everybody has their own interpretation. So I, um, I liked this pairing together. Um, yeah, yeah, I Suzanne's like this photo quite tunnels. a bit, and I'm I'm seeing something very different. I'm, I'm seeing like a very cold um, winter uh, day in the Midwest, and I'm staring up over a fence line, and I'm seeing um, huge uh, gatherings of starlings flying, and those you know those those clouds oh. of of uh, you know, you know, gatherings they do. I, mean, I don't know if you guys have seen those massive. Uh, groupings of birds when they fly, but that's that's what it's kind of looked like to me. Or or herring in the ocean swimming together. Oh so. wow! Oh, yeah, like a like one of those photos where all the fish mm -hmm. are all together. I could see that. Yeah. Wow. You're kind of. Yeah. I mean, it's totally like, where's Waldo? You know, like once you see or say, you know, figure out. But what do you think the one on the left looks like? You know, More I, birds. I can, still, I can I can still force it into that paradigm, but I think, <laughs> I think, I think what's I think for me what it's doing is, is I'm I'm seeing a cold plane because of the the, the cold tones. Yeah. And I'm I'm seeing a winter sky, and I'm looking up in the sky, and I'm fitting that into that mm. construct. Okay. <laughs> what else would be there? I like it. We're probably both totally off base. It's probably a dog or something. Yes. So yes. you know. <laughs> Dog's nose against the window. <laughs> Exactly. Well, I guess, you know, we we're just going to have to be patient and find out on that one. So Luis shared um, some, looked like a series, um, you know, we've broken them apart, but it was fun to kind of see these, you know, they're really pretty again, you know, playing with what we have in front of us, you know, with this weather, but you know, the framing of this and the textural, and again, ice to me can really um, sort of emulate it, sort of another kind of type of Rorschach test. Um, it's a really lovely leaf. And, you know, with we all have cameras in our hands now, you know, with these phones. I mean, I'm constantly photographing, even when I don't even have my camera. And I mean, just, I remember I was going to my gym and I looked down, um, I'm here in Manhattan and I saw this ice and in this ice were two pink ballet slippers totally frozen in blue ice and I was like okay that is so weird and so you know I took a picture of it I post on Instagram and then one of my editors saw it and guess what it was published in National Geographic and it was such a totally random shot that I just got with my phone but it was like, what was that about? Like, why would somebody freeze pink ballet slippers and blue ice, you know? So anyway, it was just um, my point being that this is so great, like make sure you're looking down and, you know, looking all around and, um, you know, at what photos you can create or make with your, um, I'm not, I don't know what this was photographed with, but I just love that, like these found objects or these mm -hmm. moments. Um, and then you just create something artistic. It's a very, to me, this is a very arty photo. Um, the only suggestion that I would make on something like this is I would like a little more breathing room around the leaf, you know, like give it a little more of a framing because the ice is so interesting and it's just a perfect leaf. And that's the only, you know, like just if you're going to pursue these sort of um, found objects and ice as I saw a small series of yours, I don't, but, but I liked this one. I, re I really like the color palette in this mm. picture. I mean, it's so, 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 so little and so much going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I, I like the brown and the, and then the, yeah. the tonal gradations from the, the white to the black from, from the lower left corner to the upper right hand corner. Yeah, it just, it just feels really rich to me in a very. In a I very love all those. Way. Yeah, those different colors in that right hand side. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, the ice really captures it, and you really want to make sure it's not going to get blown out, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's that works. It's very, very pretty. It feels like fall transition to winter um, in one photo. 
And before we go on, uh, Suzanne did, Stafford, you were correct. It's a gathering of thousands of sterling and a synchronized flight <laughs> taken. Oh, yeah, ah. On both of them, she said, so. Oh, Stafford, I owe you a beer. All right, I'll collect. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it FedEx. <laughs> Good job. Okay, I'm totally out there. All right, well. Um, so let's see. Oh, I love this one. I thought this was so magical and so simple. Um, it just felt so Japanese and I love the spacing of it. And, you know, it's brave and it's bold to just give this photo half to three fourths of white space, but it totally works. And I was really looking at it, trying to figure out, is this black and white or is it just the way the shadow is? Um, because I thought it was against sky, but as I looked really closer, it looks like maybe it's actually wall. Um, so that was the only thing that I thought that maybe if you, you know, wanted, I would just make that even like cleaner because it's just, it's just so exquisite. It's just mm -hmm. the leaves are so tender and the detail on the small buds. Um, it's, it's, you know, I could see putting that up, you know, big on a wall. It's just uh, really a lovely, um, simple, but not yeah, simple. I, I had the same, same feeling. It feels very Japanese to me. And when I immediately saw this one, I said, this is a picture that belongs on ink on paper um, mm, mm -hmm. on, a, on a wall. I, I, I'm one of those old school people that thinks that the logical place for a picture to end up is um, on paper on a, on a wall somewhere. <laughs> you know, I, look at, I look at pictures all day on screens, but I just, I, just, I want that tangible object. And this one feels like it, it, it needs to, to go there. I agree. You know, the digital still feels very ephemeral. I like to hold a print, see a print. I'm so old school. I still love books. You know, I mm -hmm. mean, I just love the tactileness of books. And um, but yeah, it's it's kind of like not. It's just perfect. I mean, there's not much more to really say about it. It's a wonderful expression. Well done, Kate. Looks really good. Um, so here we have another emotive Christmas tree. Um, and I like this one. I feel, I really feel this child's anticipation. It's, um, I feel like he's getting caught, like you're creating this image and he's really looking for gifts. And then he sort of pops up like, oh, caught. And, you know, again, just addressing like this sort of, um, manipulation or way it's shot with the uh, you know soft vignetting and the soft focus but it works because it just gives that feeling of you know almost Christmas morning and um, this sort of dreamlike quality to it that I like it really it almost you know it could be like maybe a memory or you know how like you watch a TV show and everything goes really blurry and you 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 know that he's having a flashback or a dream like that's what this feels like to me it feels very dreamy um, and you know lovely expression and I mean Christmas is all about kids I mean it's just the best feeling that is a gorgeous tree by the way it's very well decorated um, yeah what I, I love like about this picture is I, I feel like this story could go either way. Right, because it's shot from a low angle. It's a little bit of that sort of monster light thing going on. Mm -hmm. It looks almost like like Orson Welles could have had his camera down here. And like this could either be like the best Christmas ever, or it could spin off into some sort of uh, other direction. And that's why I, I, like, I like that balance. So really you, like that. You're having my reaction to Judy. Like it could, yeah. There's, but that's the wonderful thing about photos. I mean, they really yeah. can be whatever story you know. The, you decide they're going to be as the picture maker or the viewer. And yeah. so, um, you know, that kind of really is a fun thing about, but yeah, he definitely looks a little naughty. I mean, he looks like he could be up to something, um, but it's, uh, and well, I, I, I like, like this sort I like of doorway, the, like you're coming yeah. into the portal. 
I like the the tree is he's done a good job of of keeping the you know the, the subject well the the boy mm -hmm. still and and the tree's kind of kind of doing its thing. So I think that mm -hmm. just I don't know just yeah creates a great kind of a cool feel feel for this photo. But the doorway just gives you that feeling yeah. like oh caught you know it's not just set up and here's the tree and the boy it's like coming in but it's um, and again that framing works really well the big netting so here we have another sort of manipulation that again you know just i think it's great i think that that's what everybody should be doing experimenting as much as possible and doing whatever especially when you come to workshops um it's just the best but um you also want to know like just be cognizant that it's adding to your story or what you're trying to say. So Veronica had a few of these full moon, different kinds of processes is why I bring that up. But this one was the one that worked for me. There was something about the color palette and the texture to it. It just felt like, oh, I'm going to start hearing something howling any minute here, you know, and the full moon brings that up and, and, the way the process worked, it really made those um, sort of bamboo shoots, or I guess they're obviously not bamboo, but whatever plant, you know, um, sort of really stick out. Um, it felt a little tinny, a little cool, um, and I liked that. So it made a really interesting photo. It almost felt very watercolorish. Mm -hmm. um, it added a little bit of a shadow to the moon. So to me personally, this worked better than the others, maybe not better, but it spoke to me more. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's really fun to experiment and see where you want to go with all of these. And is this your voice or is it just a voice for this particular series or is it something to then try out, um, you know, with people or other kinds of landscapes or, um, yeah. Yeah, I think this would be nice printed on a nice watercolor paper. It feels it feels mm, that's mm -hmm. the direction it wants to go. Yeah, it's very watercolory. I absolutely love the, um, you know, where that white space is. Like you're, it feels like you're just going into this tunnel of fog. But the texture in there is just gorgeous. And why this works so well is because you have that white space there that really made those plants sort of frames nicely so you could see them more than in the others and I don't know if it's hard for people to see but if you look on the left side it's it's almost like this strange sort of silvery look to the plants so you're it's almost like you're getting this silvery um, moon uh, glow mm -hmm. but so here we have another one of Luis's. And again, this is sort of like a little series she did on the ice and I like it. I like, you know, when you're seeing these little things peeking out, feels kind of, is that artist, Angie, Andrew Goldworthy? But okay, I know you're gonna see something totally different, but in the ice, I love that, you know, the little Rorschach in me sees little rabbit ears and you know, that, that's what my eye kept going back to are these little rabbit ears and a face and then um, just above the rock. And it's just so pretty, the colors and you know all the different texture. I just love how you can see you know, the rocks under the ice. Um, and then you, your eye just has something to center on that it grounds your eye having that hole in the rock there. Um, no, I, 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 I thought love, this was I, a nice series. Yeah, I love, I love these tones. But I think what you said before about the, the leaf pitcher probably holds true here too, that um, it'd be nice to have a little bit more room, breathing room. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also saying if you go to the left of it, you've got a nice curve coming from the rock that looks like it curves up. And I'd like to see a little bit more of that. Mm -hmm. um, but but I, I just think it's, a, you know, just the, the tones are just beautiful. Yeah. And I like the, I like the uh, little rock peeking through. Yeah, I think, Louise, that's the only real comment. Because I could really see these like as separate framed pictures, again, mm -hmm. the wall, you know, but going up and, but just having a tiny bit more breathing space around that. So you really get the feeling of these curbs and the, 
the objects and um, yeah, I mean, they're each, each one has its own personality and it's so different. You know, I think this series really works. It's, it was a fun one to, to review. Um, oh, Donna, this was nice. I mean, again, this was really pretty. The, uh, it felt like glass in front. I know the ice and it, it's just the color palette is so soft and Again, it's brave, you know, having that white space there, but, or pinkish space, empty space, but it works. I think with this one too, I'd love to just see a little bit more on the right hand side because that ice is so interesting and see, um, you know, more of that, that texture. And then you just have that weird sort of fried egg looking piece of ice like to the left of it. and. <laughs> <laughs> it it just um i don't know it was just kind of a lovely little still life to just come across but yeah it, it feels on. calm but I, I just like i just a lot of these ice foot photos i just love the color palettes so i just it just it, it, it all works together i mean designers spend years and years and years trying to figure out how to make stuff look like this right <laughs> like how, how do you get all yeah. those tones to work together that way so mm -hmm. kudos So Donna, this was interesting to look at. I mean, this definitely took a bit of back and forth. Um, you know, reflections are really fun to work with. And this was a strange one. I mean, it really, to me, I really had that feeling of getting out of a warm car and out into the cold, you know? And it's cool because you have this portal like getting out the door, but then on the right-hand side, you also, get the feeling of the environment. So there was a lot going on. And I and I loved the framing of the man because it was just a tiny slice of life. I mean, you see that he's a photographer, you see he's wearing a mask, you know? So that puts you in a, not only <clears throat> a sense of place, but a sense of time. It's taken during this pandemic, you know, of he's wearing a face mask and it reminded me of when I used to use film all the time and it would get stuck and then you'd have one picture on top of another. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was always like this weird photo. I mean, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, but it just has that feeling of a hodgepodge. Um, and then the, you know, the only thing that I could really comment, I mean, cause I think it's so, it just looks like a collage. I mean, when you look at that bottom part, you know, the tree suddenly shows up again. It's just, you know, when you're doing these sort of crazy reflections, like the giveaway was that I see you, just a tiny bit of your shoulder and hair there. Like if you had just stepped over just a tiny little bit that and not seen you, then the just to give us a little bit more of the mystery, you know, then I think you'd still be like, oh, what's going on, you know, but, um, you know, I just think when people, when you're, whenever someone's making these crazy reflections, just, I don't know, be aware of like, if you're showing up or, you know, where you are just to kind of add to your, um, to the mystery of your photo. But I think it's, it's a fun one. It was really a interesting eye. Yeah, I, I think it works too. And I think like when I see pictures like this, my initial response is you're making my brain work too hard to figure this yeah, out. Exactly. I, 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 I wanted I to do something else. I'm like, I don't yeah. want to do it. Right. Yeah. But then if you spend a little time and, and it's well done, it, it works. And this one, mm -hmm. this one does work. So it's like, yeah, it's worth getting through that. Well done. Good job though. Evelyn. So this was someone that interpreted did holiday as holiday vacation, um, which is really interesting. I don't know if you actually went here for your holiday, but lucky you if you did. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing it's somewhere in Africa. Um, and I, you know, I just think what he's doing is really interesting. I love this. You know, I'm someone that photographs cultures all over the world and so I'm always really interested in that. And what I would, you know, with a photo like this, I would, this is like a photo I would take, you know, when you're out and you're about and you're scouting and you're like, oh, this is really interesting. But this is a great jumping off point because here's a man, he's engaged. So 
he's kind of, you know, stuck. And you know, so you can, if he speaks any English, have a little conversation with him and say, oh, you're a fisherman. When do you go out? And, you know, I start gleaning information from him and figure out, oh, when do you go out, dawn or later in the day? Then follow him, get that really cool looking boat and get him in some amazing light. You know, does he have a family? Can you go visit them on the beach? I mean, I'm always trying to worm my way into people's lives, you know? And so don't think about just like, this is the, it, the one shot, but you know, I guess, you know, if this is your thing to go and like travel to new locations and people, which is definitely my thing. And gosh, I'm missing it so much right now. Um, just seeing this photo makes me um, pine for this, but you know, just a suggestion um, just in general that, you know, you can always just work a situation, you know, and if you see that, I mean, that's such an unusual boat. Is there a place where they go make these, you know, is there a place you can go photograph like that? Maybe you have all that, I don't know. But um, I was also trying to like, I think it's interesting being close, but I also felt like maybe pulling back a little, like I, I wanted to see more of that really interesting boat, but a little bit of the land, because just because I was trying to figure out where are we? Are we in Madagascar, Lamu, Zanzibar? Um, so it was, um, yeah, I mean, very different from our, you know, snow and Christmas lights. So I thought it'd be fun to pull one of these out. But, oh my God, how much do I love this one, Suzanne? Okay, this is so weird. Um, it's just like something that I kept coming back to because you don't expect the elongation of the legs to be in the reflection. And I just love that you did this because I don't think I would have seen it this way, you know, but to see just a little bit of their feet and then you get the length of their legs you know, and the V shape and what totally makes this work is they're all in step and they have those repeating Vs. You know, if you didn't have that, it wouldn't have worked. And, and then they're coming up to this shimmering white, weird um, weirdness. Like you don't know what you're looking at. They feel like ephemeral creatures, you know, and they're, you know, so they're shimmery and they're just the blue palette, like, Hate to keep bringing up that wall, but I could totally see this big printed on aluminum in a condo in San Diego, like it, in the palette, the color palette, it just says beach. Hmm. Um, but I just love the way you saw this and the way you shot it. I just think it's hysterical. Something about it just really cracked me up. But, um, yeah. Well done, everybody. That was yeah, that, that was a good set. Very different interpretations, you know. Really good. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for everybody for sending those in. It's always it's always interesting when we send these prompts out, and um, and then what we get back, and that's why we that's why we do these because they're so much fun, and I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. hoping that folks enjoy them and they will continue to do it. Um, so Zach, we don't have a lot of questions today. People are just more in, in you know interested in a. Uh, and hang out. Do you have a, do you have one you want to queue up? Yeah, I got some just to ask for myself. Mm -hmm. So right when you started, Allison, you talked about one word assignments. And I love that mm -hmm. idea of giving yourself a one word assignment. Like I personally, I know that I struggle sometimes with just getting out and photographing because I tend to be such a studio photographer or such a controlled shooter where I, I have to build before I shoot. I'm that kind of a person. So I have been giving myself kind of tasks like that of, of one word or shoot with this other camera that I don't usually use, photograph Polaroids, just to get my eyes seeing. So I'm just curious if you have any one word assignments that you've been working on or ones that you have suggestions for people out there who maybe are struggling with that kind of idea of jumping into continuously shooting. Who, oh, me? Do yeah. I have an idea? Oh yeah, I have one that jumps to mind right away because I gave it to myself um, just for the fun of it. I mean, I'm doing all this like intense editing and you know all this stuff, but I get out and I walk Central Park every day. I do this eight mile loop and I just said, I'm gonna do a little thing on snow people. And I just started photographing snow people and it was so fun and there's they're just so funny. And I mean, for New York, like, 
it's just weird. I mean, because mm -hmm. we just don't get this kind of snow that often. So, you know, that was just a fun little thing, you know, it gives your brain a little relaxation. Um, I know that some of you can't do that like all over the place, but you know, what's uh, sometimes, um, and maybe talk with some of your friends about this, but you can just make up one words. And then if you put them in a bag, like I do this with some of my classes and each one has to pick just one word or you pick one a day or you pick it for yourself. And it doesn't even have to be like an actual thing or it could be like yellow. Sometimes, you know, when people are stuck, I say, just go photograph anything yellow and you just start looking for a color. Um, but just make it thematic because it also gets you in the mindset of thinking in terms of projects and how do photos work together and what's a theme, um, you know, kind of like, you know, the ice theme or, and again, all photos don't have to be in a theme. They can be one ops, but um, uh, yeah, I just think that that's a, um, just a, I don't know, again, like Stafford said, we don't want to completely overtax our brains at this point, you know, just a fun little one word, like I get to go out and photograph leaves or I don't know, it's, I, it's, you know, I, I when I teach this um, workshop on, you know, social documentary photography, that is one of the challenges that the students have to come up with what are they going to photograph. And so, you know, we sort of work backwards because it can seem so big, you know, but if you just work, you know, like with one student, we just started working with hands. I said, let's just, you know, photograph. What are, what do people do with their hands? And then that turned into sort of like this idea of like laboring. And then, you know, he continued this project to go photograph in like this sawmill. And I mean, things can just take you to places and um, it's sort of how my books evolve, you know, like you don't, I don't start out thinking, oh, this is going to be a book, you know, so you can just start. Um, and even if you're just, sometimes you need an end product, like even if you just think, oh, I'm just going to post these eight photos on Instagram. I just did that today. It was so silly and so stupid. But, you know, I was like, I'm going to post my five snowman pictures. And I don't know, it, I entertain myself. So, um, you know, sometimes it's just that idea of posting it on Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. You know, not everything has to be on a wall or published or. Um, Absolutely. So. No, I agree. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I see that someone asked, how was the first image of the lights made? Yeah. Um, that one. Yeah. yeah. Does somebody. Um, some are any of the artists here that made these photos? Uh, some of them have commented but mainly just Suzanne was the only one. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen anyone respond to that person. So um, Watson asks, how do, you, how do you get a photo into the discussion? Do you have to be part of the workshop? Absolutely not. You just no. Need to be, you just need to be part of the, the mailing list and stay tuned to, to what we do. And we'll, we're gonna continue to send these prompts out just because they're, they're fun. Mm -hmm. So well, sorry. I know Jillian and she's mm -hmm. very self-motivated. So yeah. I Jillian totally suggest that you jump on this bandwagon because mm -hmm. it's so fun. And um, you know, I just love that you guys are still doing this for the community, that you know, just to kind of get people out and dusting off their cameras and you know, just to keep motivated to get out photographing is a wonderful thing. And there's certainly things close to home. A lot of people are doing things in their backyard right now. So yeah, that's one thing that, you know, that struck about our conversation when we we're getting ready for this workshop is you, you know, you, you had said, you know, what am I going to do during this time of COVID? You know, I can't, I don't have all these assignments to do. And, and you said you've been as busy as you've ever been. Yeah. And, um, you know, Reed's been teaching a workshop called Homescapes, where it's it's really about how our world has shrunken so much, but there's still a million stories in that smaller radius. And mm -hmm. if people can just get out and start shooting and, you know, so we're going to continue to send these things out to folks and crazy little assignments and we'll have folks like Allison come in and <laughs> give give their give their commentary. <laughs> Yeah, I love this. This is great. I can just like sit here in my office, have Zach man the controls, and you have my favorite backdrop back up. I yeah, love that I backdrop. Me it's too. so you had that at the very beginning. I love that one. So no, I like um, talk, talk just a little bit about what what 
what are you what are you looking for when you're editing a project like this because this was a very nondescript project you know we gave you we you know we gave oh you this project oh i thought you meant my project no, no, i'm no, like this, oh my uh, god uh, don't get one, started oh this okay yeah. this was much more manageable yeah. what am i looking for um you know i think with any photo you just something that holds your eye that you're going to mm. come back to you know even if something looks really simple like the um uh that black and white you know with the 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 tree branch. Tree branch, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. I was trying to think of a bush or something. But um, I think, yeah, I, I want it to be emotive. I want to feel something um, or I want my curiosity peaked, you know, like with a circular one, you know, there's a whole conversation now, how was this shot? Um, and I think, you know, it's just to see someone's different interpretation and different take on how they see the world. I mean, mm -hmm. think about how many billions of photos are going out every single day, and yet we can still be awed and surprised. And I don't wanna tell you how long I've been making photos and how long I've been doing this and how many photos I look at all the time, but how wonderful that we can still be awed and, and curious and, um, you know, but sometimes you wanna be, you know, an evocative mood uh, you want, but you know, you want to be technically good. I mean, I think this is really important, especially when you're photographing in other cultures that you can't let the exoticness um, of the culture or the technique that you're using monopolize and be the point of the photo. Because, you know, it's like I said, if you're going to use those techniques, have it for a purpose. Um, but you know, you can't just take a picture of someone that's wearing a super cool hat in the dock and be like, oh, this is a great photo. Look how cool his hat is. You better know how to make a good photo. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then that you can, uh, you know, add your own sense of style and self. And I think that's what's, you know, we, you know, I see this going on at the workshops, you know, and that's what I love about the workshops is, when we're a person, you know, I've got the documentary and someone's doing the artistic and, you know, there's like black and white in their studio. And it's just, everybody's kind of seeing the world in their way and, you know, just sharing that. And that's what's fun too with the workshops because it's a team effort. It's not just me, you're like thrust into suddenly talking with all these other photographers. And I know people in my workshop that totally stayed in touch and, mm -hmm. I, the funniest thing when we were in Mexico, because I've taught in Mexico and Santa Fe, one of the older guys, he had never even heard of Instagram. Oh my God, we were like rolling in the floors, but guess what? He loves Instagram now and like, that's his thing. And so, you know, and the class was so great. They set him up with an account. And so anyway, I think that there's a lot to learn from your fellow photographers. It's a great opportunity. No, I, um, I always I always love what I call the, the arc of the workshop because when people first come here, or even in the online classes, they're kind of terrified. They think they need to produce something that's great. Yeah. But what they really need to do is just get off their butts and start shooting and making pictures, because um, everyone's at a different spot on their journey. And what what folks like you can do for us is help us move to that to that next step. And so I, so I, I always I always enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm very much a documentary photographer, mm -hmm. you know, my work. And I mean, I do humanitarian work and like, so I do this all over the world, but then this crisis came to my own city and we were really in the epicenter. So I photographed every single day I was out photographing mm -hmm. the pandemic. You know, we had tents in Central Park, medical tents. We had the U.S. Comfort come in. We had, um, you know, just COVID epicenter. And then, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement. So that was every day going out for protests. You know, the election was huge here. So, you know what? Sometimes it's nice to just go out and photograph snowmen. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, you know, like just give your mind a little peace, you know? So, but awesome. yeah, Paul, dust those cameras off people, yeah. have fun. Paul Luerman also responded and said that the first photo, which was his, um, that it was a camera on a tripod, like you had suggested, Allison, um, mm -hmm. and that he did a slow shutter and then rotated, rotated the whole. That's box. what that's what I thought it was. Yeah, that he was rotating it. Good for him. Yay, tripod. <laughs> <laughs>
good yeah. use for tripod. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Well, well done, everybody. They no, look so yeah. great. I yeah, mean, I, I just want to thank everybody for participating. And, you know, as, as long as you guys, you know, will keep participating in these things, we'll keep doing them because it's a lot of fun for us at the workshops. And I, I do mean it that, it, that it is important to stay together as a creative community and, and lean on each other as a, as a catalyst, both to challenge yourself, um, but also to find kind of a shelter in a storm from time to time and just be with like-minded people that love art and love creativity. And that's, and that's, that's what we're here to do. Um, yeah. So Allison, we will be talking to you about oh, uh, coming back and uh, talking to us about the book, you know, when, when you're mm, ready to, 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 to that. publish that, because I think that would be a great uh, discussion for everybody. And then, you know, just stay tuned. And then also, if you are interested in taking Allison's class, um, I, I, will, I will shamelessly market it because <laughs> I think it's worth it. Right. It, it'll, it'll be a, it'll be a wonderful adventure for, for anyone who has the, the opportunity to participate in that. So stay tuned. We will be sending out more prompts. Uh, Allison, do you have anything you want to say in closing? You did. Did you point out that it is virtual, this class, right? Yes. This I, class okay. is virtual. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted yeah. to make sure people were aware of that. Um, but, um, but it'll be great. You know, it'll be really interactive and we will be making photos. So um, I just want to thank everybody. This was really fun and I really enjoyed it. I, I want to do another one, but um, <laughs> anyway. Careful, careful what you ask for. I, I know. I'm, I'm writing yeah. in. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I'll, we'll see how this one panned out first. Yeah. You might, I might like never be able to do another one again. No, it was great. <laughs> no, it was great. We had a lot of fun. Thank you. Good. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good night, I really you guys. Appreciate it. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Photograph. Yep. <laughs>